how apathy politics plays into the hands of the libertarian and liberty and Jeffersonian movements. So what we need to do is to have these three movements, libertarian, the Occupy movement, anti-corruption people, small government people, people against the war on terror and the war on drugs, who are willing to compromise with the people that are against uh, heavy taxation. Um, so there's a lot of elements to put together a movement. Uh, time is not on our side, in my view. Uh, Mr. Ron Paul thinks that an idea whose time has come cannot be stopped. Uh, certainly an interesting and hopeful thought. Um, but um, in terms of actual implementation, we have this very major problem, which is that there is no proportional representation, which means uh, they talk about it being a republic, but it really isn't. It's a duopoly. And the way we designed it created that uh, to a large extent, or at least the way it's interpreted. Because legislators are heavily bound to a specific geographical area, rather than everyone being able to vote on a national slate of uh, Congress people, and then uh, accordingly the ones that gain enough votes uh, uh, go on, or uh, that they can vote directly for parties, and the parties can put up a platform, and that way when you exceed 50 million votes and go to 100 million, you actually elect two people from the party instead of one, in an uh, example. Uh, so in other words, when you elect a party and you give them 10 million votes, they get 30% of the seats in the Congress. So um, I believe we need to add a third and have a tricameral legislature, but I think we need to change the rules. And I think we have to view the Senate somewhat like the way they view the House of Lords in England. Um, because the Senate um, is a very important place. It has a limited membership, and I personally don't object to its basic rules other than filibuster. Um, the House, on the other hand, in this, in my view, uh, we should look at perhaps having also, I don't really want to mess with the original conception. So how the third branch would come in uh, is essentially as a check and a balance. So that's the question on that score. Now on the question of uh, this problem of the duopoly and the problem of building a movement that can get beyond whatever the threshold is, and then the huge problem that you are likely to elect your opponent in a three-way race, generally speaking, because if you vote for a guy who doesn't win, the chances are you're splitting votes off from another guy who's more similar to him, um, uh, who who could win if you hadn't have voted for your candidate, and it works in, of course, both directions, but if you have, for example, uh, Romney and Paul and Obama, in theory, if Paul was viewed as closer to Obama, he would jeopardize the election for Obama. And that's actually what's happening out. Um, so even though you would think uh, he would be hurting Romney, he's actually in hurting Obama. So, um, so that's where this concept of uh, voter apathy comes in. In the case of voter apathy, you have an issue where you can actually take over parties with a small amount of people because nobody cares. And the interesting thing will happen is we're going to have to find out if, like in Nigeria or in Mexico, they end up uh, baking food and offering uh, hot dogs to get people to show up to events uh, and, um, and trying to uh, lure people in to counteract a insurgency. Okay, thank you. Good night.